Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Telegraph Herald More Than The Score. I'm your host Steve Ortman. Alongside me this week, Tim O'Neill. Yep. Yep, that's all you got. Yep. Show a little more excitement because we're going to talk a little football. With Steve and Tim, you know we're talking football. And this past Friday, I witnessed a huge upset in Class 1A. Maybe not a huge upset. According to the rankings, it was an upset. Bellevue Comets pick up their very first win over a number one ranked team in the state. Bellevue rallies for a 28-20 victory over West Branch. This is the Class 1A District 4 opener. And I tell you, Tim, this had the feelings of a season-ending district championship game. It was a fantastic game. From start to finish, now the Bears went out and took a 13 to nothing lead over the Comets. As we were heading into halftime, you thought this was going to be a tough, tough hill for them to climb. But Trey Doherty with the big play to kind of swing things, turn the momentum, 85-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, made the score 13 to six going into half. And then boy, he brought that energy right into the second half. Bellevue gets the ball to start the second half, and Lucas Tennant. Hicks Doherty for a 45-yard touchdown pass. And just like that, the game was tied at 13 there in the third quarter. Now, West Branch, credit to them, number one ranked team at the time. They drive right down, take a 20-13 to 13 lead. Comets, though, championship grit. Championship drive. They answer right back. Hunter Clawson, four-yard touchdown run. And a personal foul by West Branch brought the PAT attempt up to the one-yard line. Chet Kanake. Did not blink with a chance to give his team the lead. The offensive line, Hunter Clausen, bulldozes into the end zone for the two-point run. Bellevue takes their first lead at 21-20 with three minutes and change to go in the third quarter. Turns out that would be all the Comets need. They held the West Branch to 113 yards of offense in the second half. Four total turnovers, a fumble, and three interceptions of quarterback Bo Cornwell. And uh, Clausen capped it. With a 37-yard touchdown run with a minute 39 to go. Bellevue picks up their very first win against a number one ranked team. Great win for the Comets. They moved to 5-0 on the season. They came into that game ranked number five. This past Monday, they jumped up to number three in the Class 1A rankings with that victory. Now, Hunter Clausen, the soaring Comet himself. I caught up with him after the game to talk about the win. And as you could tell, the Comets were pretty excited about it. Uh, the win for this program was amazing. Uh, it showed us that we can actually be up there with those big dogs and that since they were ranked number one, it meant a lot for us to come out with this win and just dominate. Now you guys are down 13 nothing in the first half. How big was that kickoff return by Trey Doherty? Oh, it was huge. Oh, I don't know if you saw it, but I got a big block on this one kid and Trey was <laughs> gone and it, oh, that just set the, mo to, uh, the tone for the whole game and that just got us going. Now you guys are down two touchdowns, you rally, hold them in the second half. What does that say about where this program's at right now? Uh, it says a lot. Um, it shows us that we can stay in it and we can play with any team and that we can just, we can dominate anyone. That we... Let's go, yeah! baby! Let's go! Let's go! All right, that was Hunter Clausen. Uh, special cameos there by Trey Doherty and Lucas Tennant. And uh, Clausen had a huge game, had 183 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. He's at 945 yards rushing on the season through through five games. Uh, the Comets visit Dyersville Beckman in what should be a fun matchup here this Friday night as uh, Beckman has won three in a row. So that should be a fun matchup. I know Chet Connect mentioned he was worried about a letdown, so I'm sure he's staying on the kids this week to, to get excited for that fun area matchup. But uh, last week we also had a fun area matchup. Tim, hello. Oh, wake up. You want to be part of the episode? I'm, I'm present. Yes. Western Dubuque hosted Dubuque Wallert. And uh, the Golden Eagles are looking for the first one of the season. And they still are because the Bobcats are a juggernaut right now. Yeah. I tell you what. Uh, Western Dubuque took control of that one early. Six minutes in, it was a 21 to nothing game. The final score, 63-27 to Western Dubuque over Dubuque Wallert. It was the most points the Bobcats have ever scored in a, in a game. And quarterback Kelvin Harris threw a program record tying five touchdown passes for the second time this season as Western Dubuque rolled to 4-1. Mm -hmm. Now, Harris threw touchdown passes to four different receivers. Peyton Quagliano had two, but they had a bunch of standout performances. Jake Hush doesn't normally get a lot of the headlines, gave the Bobcats a huge spark as their, their, uh, kind of their backup running back. Mm -hmm. Will Birds returned to kickoff for a touchdown for the second time this season. 
and it was one that he really probably shouldn't have taken back because he he went into the pile, disappeared, and then somehow just kept breaking tackles, put a couple a couple spin moves on at the end, and then just broke out the end of the pile and took it the rest of the way for an 84-yard touchdown run, uh, kickoff return, excuse me. Uh, just an impressive effort for him. He now has two return touchdowns on three kickoff returns this season. So note to future Bobcat opponents, kick it to somebody else. Also, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Good other... advice. <laughs> yes. Uh, another record fell for the Bobcats in that game. Uh, it's one that we've kind of been watching lately as the season has gone on. Bobcats have ha had had some kicking struggles early in the season and notably lost the game 7-6 to six to North Scott after missing an extra point and a field goal. But that was a thing of the past this week because Gabe Ulrichs hit a program record nine extra points. He was nine for nine, bringing that back for the Bobcats, so that is a huge boost for them going forward. Dramatic pauses really kept me on the edge of my seat there. Nicely I, done. I know what I'm doing, Steve. Yeah, well, uh, if we want to uh, real quick... Uh, yeah, big win for the Bobcats. If you want to take a look across the, the Mississippi real quick, East Dubuque had an exciting comeback win on Friday night. Yeah, and uh, Amboy Lamoille may never want to see East Dubuque come back to their field again because for the second time in three seasons, East Dubuque rallied out of a big late fourth quarter deficit to beat Amboy Co-op. This time it was 27-21. to 21. Declan Schemmel caught two touchdown passes late to, to rally mm -hmm. the Warriors to the victory, both from Lane Boyer. And boy, how about this one? They converted a fourth and 27 on the eventual game-winning drive. It was a tipped pass and a diving catch by Schemmel to keep that drive alive. Then they eventually went on to win. So that was a huge win for the Warriors. And, and not only that, they're, they're two and three. They still got a chance to get into the playoffs, but their losses this year have been to some very strong teams. So, so those Warriors are battle-tested and could be a force down the stretch of the season. All right. Well, uh, it was exciting Friday night last week. This week, uh, got some more fun matchups. Like I said, I'm looking forward to that great area matchup. Bellevue visiting Dyersville Beckman. Tim, what are you going to be doing? I'll be at a football game. All right. Well, we'll have that football game covered for you in the Telegraph Herald on Saturday as well as telegraphherald.com. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Telegraph Herald. More than the score, I'm your host, Steve Orton, alongside Tim O'Neill. We'll see you next week.